Hi everyone, how are y'all doing? I just am so appreciative and so happy to be able to come before you again. And so I think we'll do maybe a few more lectures like this. I'm gonna to try to pull from some quote guest speakers and give you all some other lecturers and, and uh, hopefully some infamous and famous people to discuss some more subject matters with you in regard to social psychology. But I definitely wanted to talk about um, the subjects we're going to discuss today because it's one of the things that I study in my lab and I absolutely love it. It is, has become my, my passion. Um, I think I put in my introduction letter or maybe just mentioned it to you all that I study both attraction and acculturation. And so I thought I would uh, just talk to you about acculturation today and how it is a different and maybe the same as assimilation. So if you're not familiar with those topics, hopefully from now on you'll be able to go and say, hey, I understand acculturation and I understand assimilation and throw those in at some type of cocktail party or wherever they may come up. So let's get right into it. It's a very short, quick and sexy lecture and then you'll be on your way. So you're gonna see me dress the same way twice because this one is so quick and Anyway, I just didn't think about changing clothes. So don't think I only have two outfits. It's just a little bit of laziness on my part. All right. OK, here we go. So what is acculturation? What is assimilation? Here we go. Acculturation. So this thought of acculturation is the adoption of another's cultural um, traditions, values, beliefs, assumptions, etc. So acculturation can be in the form of um, religion. It can be in the form of ethnicity, um, maybe gender. I've never thought of it before until right now, but that could be a possibility. But mostly you will see the, it with religion and culture. So if you're acculturated, it means that you have completely adopted or taken on the culture of whatever majority culture you're in. So if you're a minority group, you've taken on the majority culture's belief systems, their traditions, their creeds, what makes them an ethnic group or a religious group. Um, what I study specifically is African-American acculturation. So how acculturated are African-Americans in this country to the majority culture? So when it comes to acculturation, you have several different um, terminologies that are used. So let's go back to the PowerPoint so you can see that. So again, you have acculturated. Adoption of the cultural traditions, values, beliefs, assumptions, etc., of the majority culture. You also have a thing called biculturalism or being bicultural. And sometimes we think of that from someone coming from another country, but it can also be right here among um, uh, cultural groups or subgroups, some people call them, here in the United States. So a bicultural person, I kind of think of myself as a bicultural person. Probably I think um, there was a scale that I actually uh, do in my lab called the African American Acculturation Scale, and I scored biculturally. So as I'm before you all, even though it's videotaped, right? I'm making sure to be astute and a stout. Is that a word? A stout? Astute and professional. And, you know, I have my little jacket on. And I'm making sure that I look as professor like as possible. But when I'm home, kicking it with my parents, believe me, I say, um, and y'all, and all kinds of things, kind of what I do online. I'm a lot more relaxed. I have these two different lifestyles that I live and I'm very comfortable switching between those two lifestyles. I understand how to be at work and how to work in the corporate world, but also not to bring those type of traditions and creeds and values that I've adopted home to my household. So, um, so again, let's go through just specifically what bicultural is. The com combining the traditions of one's own culture while incorporating the traditions of the majority culture. So that would be counted as a, excuse me, a bicultural person. And like I said, I would really count myself as a bicultural person. Um, you may count yourself as a bicultural person. Maybe perhaps you are of the majority 
culture in this country, but you have adopted this kind of hip hop lifestyle. And I say that because that may be a little bit stereotypical, maybe a little bit specific, but it did start among African Americans and Latino persons in this country. So if that's the case, then maybe you, you are a part of hip hop culture. You love it. You adore it. You dress hip hop. You dance hip hop. You listen to hip hop music. But when you're home talking to your mom and dad, you're not really like, yo, 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 baby. Know what I mean? Okay. So that's biculturalism. So let's go down to the last point with acculturation. Again, these are three terms that are normally heard or used among the acculturation research. And that would be traditional. So being fully immersed in the culture of origin. So that means that you are traditionally your cultural group. So if I was not bicultural, if I was not acculturated, then I would just be everything about me would say that I am an African-American person from dress to religious to superstitions to the types of food that I eat. And again, because I have such deep roots in my black community and also in the Caucasian uh, community or the melting pot of the United States, I'm very much bicultural because I, I have I've, I've held on to both the traditional and the acculturated worlds. So those are the differences. Um, those are terms that are very useful and important. And what you're going to do is actually find an acculturation scale, take an acculturation scale, and see where you fit. Are you a traditional person? Are you an acculturated person? Are you a bicultural person? And I'm, uh, I want you to kind of look for some websites of where you can do that yourself, but I think I'll provide you with a little information as well. So again, I took a thing called the African American Acculturation Scale. And if you go back to the, um, to the lecture slide, we'll see that Landron and Klonoff, 1994, were actually the um, creators of the first African-American acculturation scale. So just to give you a little bit of a briefing on acculturation among African-Americans, it was thought or has been thought um, or misconceived that African-Americans did not have a distinct culture from Caucasian Americans. Well, Landron and Klonoff kind of felt that there was something different going on. They thought just like Asian American persons, Latino American persons, persons of maybe Muslim um, religion versus Christianity and um, immigrants who come to this country and others, um, that yes, the African Americans do have a distinct culture and there are things that make them very, very specific from other people. And so in 1994, they came up with this scale. So actually acculturation is not a very new topic. It's been around since the late 1800s, actually mid 1800s. And but, so when you think about that, the history of acculturation and the studies of acculturation versus the recency of Landron and Klonoff scale, um, this thought has been widely accepted among uh, psychologists that African Americans were um, homogenous to the majority culture in this country. But what we found out that we're not. And so um, I've had the opportunity to present at research conferences and now to present to you all this great thing of African American acculturation. I'd love for you to come into my lab, but of course you'll be able to see the scale. And uh, it's been just a joy and a wonderful uh, opportunity for me to be a part of this, this growing research. All right, so that's acculturation. Let's go on to the next slide. And we're gonna look at assimilation. So maybe sometimes these words are used, um, I don't wanna say simultaneously, but they're interchanged, simulation and acculturation. But assimilation is a little bit different. Um, it may be very similar to biculturalism, but assimilation is the joining of more than one cultural group or ethnic background or religious background. So it's where you are actually kind of merging these two together, but you have not, you have not lost either one of the cultures. So if anything, assimilation would be close to a bicultural person. Um, there was one other thing that I wanted to say about acculturation, because it's a question that I asked in a course that I was, had the privilege of taking under Dr. Uh, Patricia Heiser Matoya, who, who teaches African American studies and African American psychology here at UNL, UNLV. If you get the opportunity to take her course, I encourage you to do so. She is phenomenal. But one question that I posed to my class and to my professor was, hey, is acculturation a bad thing? And Landrin and Klonoff would actually say that someone who is completely acculturated, someone who is, has dismissed who they were as a culture and adopted a whole new culture is actually a pathology. So there's actually something mentally that's not going to help them and that there may be stressors that, 
that occur or other issues due to them forgetting who they were um, as maybe growing up and adopting a whole new culture. So that's something maybe we'll discuss on discussion boards. You all can be sure to give me information. I try to get back with you as soon as possible. But um, that's one thing about acculturated persons. By cultural people, I think there's a less of a stressor, but there may still be some type of pathology going on that you're trying to fit in this quote, normal world or regular world, as well as in your minority or home life. So um, those are things to think about. But an assimilated person is the, sort of the same thing. It's a, a very similar to bicultural. You hold on to your own, but you also grab onto this other culture and you run with both of them with all your might. So, OK, that's about it on those two things. We're going to discuss culture and other things along with this. But I just wanted to give you all some distinctions on acculturation and assimilation, because a lot of times people get very confused with those. And I hope I've cleared it up. So have a great day. God bless you guys. And I'll talk to you soon.